All right, it's Wednesday, the day before my birthday. I figured I have most time to do this today. So I'm going to be reviewing three movies that are birthday related. Happy Death Day. Starting with this one. Happy Death Day. Um, yeah, I remember when I first saw the trailers for this. I was like, okay, it's Groundhog Day with a horror element. I always thought it'd be cool to do a, a horror, like, Groundhog Day. And it's more horror comedy than anything. The second one's a little more different, but, yeah. Before I start really getting into the review, I got a shout out. Give a shout out to uh, Big LT Radio because while he does not like horror movies, like he has no interest in any horror movies, but he saw the trailer for it and he picked out who the villain was going to be. He's like, it's, you know, I know who it is. It's, and we're in the, I'm in the theater watching this and when they revealed who the killer was, I was like, Son of a bitch, he was right. And uh, that kind of carries over to the second one. Because the second one's a kind of a tricky, tricky, uh, tricky movie. You know, when you try to figure out who the killer is, they don't really care in that one. But So, yeah, it needs to say I was like, son of a bitch, he was right. So, uh, yeah, so the story revolves around Tree. She uh, wakes up in another dorm room. Uh, a guy named Carter, and, you know, he, we find, you know, she thinks that he took advantage of her, that they did something. We found out later he just saw that she was drunk and took her back and let her sleep in the room. He was being, he was being a nice guy, you know, uh, some of that stuff. So he was, yeah, he wasn't taking advantage of her like most of the guys in the college would. He was, he's a nice guy. He's generally a nice guy, and. You don't get many of those in these movies, you know what I mean? Uh, but, uh, <clears throat> but yeah. Uh, so she wakes up and we establish this stuff that you're going to see. Much like Groundhog Day, which I wasn't able to review because I couldn't find it anywhere. And I forgot to order it off of next year, I, I promise. But um, it goes through the thing. She, uh, the first thing she sees is... is uh, Ryan, the roommate, Ryan coming in, oh, what's a fine with giant? If I have a giant or what? And then she leaves and you get the, uh, you know, she went through someone asking her for like, like a, a green piece or something and some dude checking her out and there's a dude, there's like the sprinklers turn on, on a couple about the kiss and there's a, um, a frat thing, a hazing going on where one of them falls down. And then she bumps into her, uh, someone that she dated named Tim, who is, a, see, I don't understand, like, we find out later that he's gay. So if he's gay, I mean, he's probably in the closet gay, but, so why is he, is he desperately trying to cling on to being straight by constantly calling her and stuff? Because that's what we get, is that she, he constantly... Keeps calling her, texting her, whatever, and okay, I don't know. Maybe maybe he's, maybe, like I said, maybe he's desperate to hang on to his straightness. So he, you know, he doesn't want to admit it because he's still in the closet. But the second one, of course, he is. She's like, you know, she's like, quit stalking me, and she runs off and we get the whole, you know, roommate stuff. Her roommate has a cupcake for her, which she, of course, you see in the trailer, she throws it down. And, uh, no carbs or whatever. One of those things. It's, just, it's hard to me to talk about this. The whole, like, repetitive day thing is going to be hard for me because it's the same thing each day. So, uh, you know, um, she has. A friend of me named Danielle, who is after this guy named Nick, but Nick likes her. And then there's a uh, um, Tree is currently having an affair with her professor, Dr. Gregory Butler. And there's a couple of times, same repeat day, like, um, they they use a lot of red herrings in this, like 
it could be the wife, Gregory's wife, Stephanie, because in this first day we see that she comes across. Now, first of all, when in this during this first day, uh, when she opens the door, a tree is sitting down and turns around like they were talking at the desk. You know, and that would make sense that you know she has a look on her face like she thinks something's going on, but. That it's less conspicuous when she's sitting down. The, the, the next day when it happens, they're both standing up. And that's a little less conspicuous. Or just a little more more conspicuous. Or whatever. Whatever that word means. It's a little more like, uh, I don't know. But, yes, the wife was a red herring. Uh, so, eventually she tells Carter what's going on after the, you know, uh, her first death, I should say is she's, first of all, how fucking stupid is she? Sorry about me saying that, but... So, she starts to walk, she has to walk to this party that they're having at a frat house or something. And she starts walking towards this tunnel, and it starts to get very creepy. Music box playing. I'm sorry. But as soon as I saw the music box there playing by itself, I'm like, no, I'm going to go a different way. I wouldn't continue... Going down the same way, I would be gone. I'm like, nope, I'm out of here. It's like the creepiest setup. Once it starts creeping me out, I'm like, no, I'm not. I wouldn't even. As soon as I see like a birthday thing in a tunnel, I'm like, no, I'm not even going to go in the tunnel. I'm going back the other way. So it's it's really, you know, you couldn't kill me off that way unless she jumped off top of the bridge or something. But yeah, she gets stabbed by the baby face killer, which. Babyface is the mascot of the college they're in. Right now. Sure, fine, whatever. <coughs> it's kind of a weird mascot, you know. Sorry about the coughing. I'm trying to get rid of this cold. I gotta go get more cold medicine here in a little bit, but um. She's kind of a weird mascot, a big baby mask. But yeah, and then she wakes up, Carter's room again, and the second time she dies, she's just like, it's weird. And she starts to go down that way again. Like, she starts to see the same things over again. She <coughs> starts to go down that same path. And then, then she has a smart thing, and she's like, no. And she turns around, she goes a different way, which, why would you go the creepy way to begin with? You just go the other, I don't know. But, um... And that's when she gets to the party and she's jump scared by a baby face, which she knocks out, turns out to be Nick. And then they try to double red herring with Nick where he's there. She punches him in the face and then it's Nick. And then he takes her up to her room. She, he takes her up to his room at the frat house. And uh, Danielle gets pissed, of course. I know what you're doing. What am I doing? You know. Whatever. Right, I don't know, girl stuff. You know, they're both probably 30. For you for hiring older, act older actors and actresses to play uh, college students. But, uh, but yeah, just her second death comes when, Nick, when she goes upstairs and Nick turns on like the, this, big, this big music and the killer stabs Nick when she's not paying attention because the music's so loud. But they do this thing when when they walk in, uh, and then uh, he's like wearing the mask again, and they're like, "Oh, it's the killer!" No, it's just him again. And then when the music starts playing, uh, and stuff, and uh, the killer does show up, kills Nick, and then she's like, "Okay, I'm done with this," because she turns around, she sees the killer, she's like, thinking it's Nick. Oh, okay, I'm done with this, and but it's not. Ray, the killer raises the knife, and um. Uh, and she looks down and she sees that Nick is dead and then he goes at her killer goes at her he knocks the knife out of the way but she, the killer breaks the bong and kills her with the bong where he wakes, she wakes up and she finally starts to realize that something is going on and she finally confides in Carter saying hey I keep dying and I keep waking up here I don't know what's going on you know 
So Carter devises a plan that because she can, you know, she dies and keeps coming back, then she can, uh, she can then, uh, put down a list of suspects and track down each suspect and to see if they're what's doing it. And this is where we, she finds out that Tim is gay. Uh, she finds out it's not Stephanie because she's killed right afterwards. Uh, and she finds out that, uh, it's not Becky because she knocks Becky unconscious with a baseball bat and then gets killed. And then she's like, spying on people like Gregory. It's not Gregory, you know, who it could be, um, Because she's so mean to everybody. And this is one of those things just like Groundhog Day where she's the bitch at the beginning. And by the end she learns a lesson and becomes a better person. Um, oh, the alternate ending. I'll talk, I'll talk about the alternate ending too. Because that's a bit of a letdown ending. But it's a good thing I didn't go with that. Um, so... Yeah, one of the things that she's, she's crossing off the list and stuff, uh, people because she dies shortly after seeing them, that she's not, they're not the ones that killed her. But Danielle, and multiple people in multiple reviews has pointed this out, so I'm, I'm not in the minority with this at all. Danielle, why is Danielle scratched off the list when they both die, um, she sees a Danny out because she gets a somewhat threatening um, birthday card from someone. She sees that Danny is the one that gives her the card. So they get into a fight and they both get hit by a truck and die. And then she just crosses Danny L's name off the list. You don't know that she's not the one that kills you. It's because you both die in a car accident. It doesn't mean this, both die and being hit by a truck it doesn't mean that. You know, she's not the one that actually killed you, but she crosses it off. And, spoiler alert, Daniel's not the killer. Just saying. Um, I'm going to reveal the killer here in a little bit. But after all this, she sees a news report about John Toombs. And John Toombs is perhaps one of the greatest uh, red herrings in slasher movie history. I swear to you. He is the perfect looking killer you think, oh, he has to be the one that's killing her. The only thing that I have a question with this is, okay, going back to the, uh, where she's doing, scratching off the list and stuff, she, it's, as soon as she realizes, like, she's spying on someone, she turns around, she gets killed. Like that. How is the killer always there? The only thing that I kept going through my mind the first time I watched this was, well, the killer's got to be trapped in the loop, too. But when we find out who the killer is, she has no idea what she's talking about, other than what she... Or the killer has no idea what she's talking about, other than what the initial thing that the killer was trying to do. And uh, so I was like, okay, so she's not stuck. Cause the only thing I can think of is that what she keeps continuously fighting over and over and over again in that loop... With the the uh, montage they do in the second one, montage, montage, the montage they do in the second one makes more sense because she keeps killing herself off. Other than this one, where she keeps being killed and found so quickly, it's like how they never explain how the killer is able to fight her so quickly. The only thing I came up with is that the killer's in the loop too. Once the killer's revealed, it's a it's very obvious she wasn't. So, I don't know. Um, then again, if the killer was in the loop, then when she bumps into the killer out of killer gear, the killer just... <laughs> killer that, and I don't know. But yeah, so we get John Toombs. John Toombs is not the killer. He's a killer, but he's not the killer. And I'll tell you that right now. But he's the greatest red herring because... There's one of the kills. Okay, we'll go back. So I'm going to have to reveal the killer here because otherwise... The killer is Lori, the roommate. Alright? Um, and, and there's a moment that hints you towards that. 
is because she gives you the cup. She gives you the cupcake, and find out later the cupcake is poison. Um, and there's a little one of those little candles in there, and uh, she lights it, gives it to her, and she just throws it on the ground. She has no carbs or whatever. Um, there's literally a scene. Okay, so. Uh, the injuries that she's sustaining, I think this is actually after the montage, uh, but injuries that she is sustaining are staying, but she's not dying from them. Which, if she was keeps sustaining the same injuries, then she should be dead. And they even say she should be dead with the injuries that she's getting, but she's not dying because she's restarting over and over again. So it's not a process where, oh, you're... You're dying. You can just keep dying over and over and over and over again. No, there is consequences to it. So, she starts, you know. And that kind of gets brushed over in the second one. where they do kind of go back to it. But, uh. And they, they totally, with this, they do another red herring with Gregory. Where they make her look like he's the killer. Because, uh, Carter takes her to the school hospital. And Gregory's there. And it's very threatening. Or, it's very, th like... Through body language, not vocally, but very physically and not physically, but through body language is very threatening towards Carter. And he's like, it's okay, Carter, you can go. And then, you know, you find that out. But, so, where was I going with this? John Toombs. Does that have anything to do with John Toombs? I don't know. So, she... Um, I totally lost my train of thought right now. I'm sorry. Totally gone. It's gone. It's out of here. Oh, what does that do with John Toombs? I'm trying to connect it. Connect the dots. You know those little coloring book connect the dots. And you get, oh, look, it's George Um, <laughs> So they make Gregory look threatening. But he's not the killer yet. Um, I, I guess he was supposed to be a second killer, but they scrapped that. Um, uh, but yeah, uh, I'm just trying to think right now, all right? Because I totally lost my train of thought with this. Um, Uh, shit. So, wait, wait, hold on. So, Lori's the, the roommate, is the killer. Lori's the killer. Uh, Gregory threatening. She gets compounded. The injuries. Lori is the killer. Poisoned cupcake. Montage. So, let's just talk about Tombs then. Um, so, Tombs is the, I've said this already so many times, the greatest red herring because he looks like a killer. He acts like a killer. You know, he is a killer, actually, but he, he just, the, the guy's face. I'm sorry about the actor, but he's very much a serial killer face. And I'm sorry for who plays him. I mean, you have a serial serial killer face. I don't know if that's makeup or he actually look like that, but he has a very serial killer face. And so she sees the news about it. She thinks, okay, that's what happened. So she goes to take care of him. And of course he gets out. But Carter's there to help and he gets neck snapped. So Carter's dead. And so there's this chase to the bell tower or whatever. And they, there's this blackout that shows up once in a while. Of course... The, and they explain that in the second one, too. No, I have to. But, uh, so she subdues Tombs, and she's she's ready to kill him. She's done. But then she realizes if she kills him and doesn't die, then, um, she's going to, uh, then Carter's going to stay dead. So she decides to forget that and go up. I remember what I was going to talk about, but we'll, we'll get to that, okay? She gets to, so she goes up, she hangs herself, and it restarts the day. Let's go back. 
I remember what it was. So when she's in the hospital with Gregory, the killer shows up and kills Gregory. And so then she runs off, takes Gregory's car, and starts to drive away. In my mind, she's free and clear, right? But she's driving too fast. The cop pulls her over. And she tries to tell her that somebody's trying to kill her. And she, he, the cop thinks she's on drugs. I, I don't know, remember if she mentions the day over and over again that he keeps trying to kill her after day after day, but um, thinks that she's on drugs. So she's like, yes, I'm on drugs because she wants to, she gets arrested, she'll be in police custody and she'll be safe. And then the dude gets ran over by a car. Again, how does the killer keep finding her? I understand the killer, or, or what it, she can just drive the road until she finds it, but she was a little far away away. And where, how did she know exactly which street she took, which way she drove? Because when she has way, she sneaks into the car and gets away with the killer barely seeing her. So, but this this is where it kind of hinted towards Lori. Um, is, uh, so she takes that little candle because there's the, a gas leak from the car that she, the tree is in. She's stuck in there because she's handcuffed. And then <coughs> she takes the little candle, drops it down. And she, that's the only F or two. Oh, fuck. And pff, explodes. And the day, you know. Now, we just found out that she sustains every injury from each death, right? How do you sustain an injury from explosion? How did, you know, your body parts go, Pfft. so how, oh, that's a big old goddess fit came out. <laughs> <coughs> your body parts go, Pfft. and so it's kind of hard to sustain injury from that. And even that, after hanging herself, when she comes through, she cracks her neck or whatever, it's just like, okay, uh, but yeah, um. Uh, So, if after this, she fully believes that it's John Toombs. And I got to believe it was John Toombs. Just the way he was acting, and he always has the baby mask. So, you know, I think it's him. So, there's a showdown. She utilizes, at the hospital, she utilizes the, um, uh, the blackout to her advantage, and she shoots and kills Toombs. However, before this, she pulled a gun on the nurse, or, and told him to go get help. And, or the cop, or whatever, to go get help. The security guard said to go get help. And then, uh, um, she did kill Toom. She killed someone. But it's wrapped up so neat, nice and neat, that she and Carter are just in her dorm room, I think. And she finally eats the cupcake. She's like, okay, so that's over. Nope, the day restarts. Because the cupcake was poisoned by Lori. And it was at this point, I was firmly believing it was Tombs and I thought it was over. And then she woke up again and I'm like, okay, why are, why Because she, I think that maybe, so, this last day, the day she kills Tombs, is the day where she's going to be, you know, everything is different. She says hi to people. She's nice to people. She signs stuff. She shows that she's completely changed. She goes to lunch with her dad. Everything has changed. And that's, the, okay, this is going to be the last one. She kills Tombs. She's changed. She kills Tombs. Everything is, is going to be great. And then it restarts again. And I remember sitting there going, bullshit. I did. I'm, I sat there and I go, I'm like, bullshit. Because it doesn't make any sense. That whole last day was should have been the last day. And I know at the point is moot now, but it because it it wasn't like no, she killed Tombs. That I don't know who wrote you know, it's it's a false ending. Um, so I was I was kinda pissed when I first watched this. Now I get what they were trying to do. You know, it's oh we fooled you, it's not tombs, but 
Those of you who knew, like my friend Big Up T Radio, that it was the roommate, and that's what they say. So I think it's the roommate. Okay. My head, I'm like, why would it be the roommate? It makes no sense. Well, it was because she is also sleeping with Gregory, and it seems that he fancies Tree over her. Yep. And uh, even they even call it out in this. That's the reason? And she said, oh, you're also a bitch. And then there's a fight. And again, we got to call the whole thing with this. She shoves the poison cupcake in Lori's mouth and then kicks her out the fucking window. And then we get this happy little ending with her and Carter at the diner. No cops. And there's, there's news reports and stuff, but they didn't think to, uh, you know, because they can analyze that cupcake. And how is, she, how is she supposed to prove that Lori made the cupcake for her and, and not vice versa? Carter, he barely knows what's going on. She just took off. She didn't explain anything to him this time, so he has no idea what's going on. And yet, there's some connection between them. And they, uh... No, that's more for the second one. I'll talk about that. But, like, so, you know, after that meeting, she wakes up again the next day in Carter's dorm room. And he, he fucks with her. Because it looks like she, the day she started again. And she's like, no. He's like, no, it's Tuesday the 19th. So, yeah. And this came out in, what, was 2017, right? On uh, Friday the 13th. It's 2018, but I swear it came out in because the the other one came out last year, so it has to be 2017. Maybe that's the DVD release was the Blu-ray release was the 2018. So yeah, just um, happy ending. But it, you got to bring in a question: Did the cops do any investigation? Because I feel like she would have had to answer a lot of questions at the police department and be held there at least overnight. Especially since, you know, she has to explain herself. Why did you throw your roommate out of the, the window? Why does she have a cupcake in her mouth? Because, oh, well, the cupcake's poisoned. Oh, but it was meant for me. Okay, how did you know that the cupcake was poisoned? Because I ate the cupcake and died from it. But I restarted the day because I keep dying. See, you see where the problem's going to be with that? Where she has to have to explain a bunch of stuff, but it's a movie. You try not to think so much about it, but you, you got to think about this. She would be not having a happy, you know, dinner date with Carter at the diner. She would be at the police department trying to explain for hours exactly what happened. But I digress. It's a good movie. I'm going to give it a 9 out of 10. I really enjoy this one. I don't think the second one is as bad as people say, but yeah. So what are your thoughts on Happy Death Day? It's a long one. I don't know. Comments below. Like, share, and subscribe. And I'll see you in the next one.